Chapter 1. Ever wait. Damon reaches toward me, grasping my shoulder, hoping to slow me, to bring me back to him. But I keep moving forward. Can't afford the delay. Not when we're so close. Almost there. The worry streaming off him like rain from a windshield, not dimming in the least when he picks up the pace, matches my stride, and laces his fingers with mine. We should head back. This can't be the place. Nothing about it looks remotely the same. His gaze travels a distance from the disturbing landscape to my face. You're right. Nothing about it is remotely the same. I hover at the perimeter, my breath coming too quick, my heart beginning to race, taking a moment to survey my surroundings before I hazard a step forward again. One small stride followed by another, until my feet sink so deep into the mud-laden earth, the tops of them vanish completely. I knew it, I whisper. The words barely audible, though I don't need to speak for Damon to hear me. It's just as easy to communicate telepathically. It's, it's exactly like the dream. It's, he looks at me, waiting. Well, it's just as I expected. I glance to the side, my blue eyes meeting his dark ones, holding the look, wanting him to see what I see. All of this, everything you see here, it's like, it's like it's all changed because of me. He kneels beside me, fingers played on my back, running his palm in slow circles up and down the path of my spine, wanting to soothe, <coughs> excuse me, my voice is <coughs> to review everything I just said, but choosing to swallow the words instead. No matter what he says, no matter how good and solid an argument he may wage, he knows better, knows all too well that I will not be swayed. I heard the old woman, he heard her too, saw the way her finger pointed, the way her eyes stared accusingly, Listen to the haunting tune of her creepy song with its cryptic lyrics and lingering melody, the warning intended solely for me, and now this. I sigh as I gaze upon it, Haven's grave, so to speak, the spot where, just a few weeks before, I dug deep into the earth to bury her belongings, all that was left of her, the clothes she wore when I sent her soul into the Shadowland, the spot I held sacred, hallowed, now transmuted, transformed, the once rich earth turned to a wet, soggy mush, with no sign of the flowers I'd manifested, no life of any kind. The air no longer shimmering, no longer glistening, virtually indistinguishable from the dark part of Summerland I'd stumbled upon earlier. So bleak, so foreboding in both its fill and appearance, Damon and I are the only creatures willing to venture anywhere near it. The birds keeping to the perimeter, the carpet of nearby grass shrinking back on itself, providing all the evidence I need to know, it's changed because of me. So that's Haven's Grave. I hope that's not a spoiler for anyone. <laughs> Haven needs a hug, huh? Poor Haven. She does. She's one of those very troubled young souls that wanted so bad just for somebody to pay attention and approve of her. It's all she really wanted. But there was really nobody to do that. And she wanted to be Everett's friend so badly, but she was so jealous of her at the same time it always sort of got in the way. And I always wanted to give her a big hug. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any questions?